The War of the Realms Asgard patch notes have landed, so we're going to talk about it. But first, the maintenance is going to be happening tonight from 4 p.m. Pacific to midnight Pacific, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Time to 3 a.m. Eastern Time. So for those of you on the Eastern Time schedule, I will be live at around 3 o'clock in the morning, very, very early. For people in Europe and Asia, it's much more reasonable. It's like 8 a.m. to uh, you know 3 p.m. So check out that and keep it locked here for that because we will be live at about 3 a.m. here on YouTube. Now, let's dive into the patch notes here. A lot has changed. It's a pretty big update, in my opinion, um, although some of the stuff is kind of left out because it's going to be announced later on. So first up, we have the four uniforms for Odin, Enchantress, Malekith, and Angela. Odin seems to be getting a lot of stuff, and the theme of these patch notes are that essentially you have a bunch of PvE uniforms and support uniforms. We don't see any counterattack. We don't see any uh, reflect. We don't see any revive. We don't see any immortality. We don't see any ignore targeting, iframe ignore. None of that. So, in my opinion, I can, I'm viewing most of these characters, all of these characters in this update from the lens of PVE. So, Odin uh, gets now 20% chain hit with a super armor and 50% all defense. That's actually meaningful for PvP, despite what I said, but. We'll see how the rest of the the rest of the outfit just doesn't doesn't uh, give him anything for PvP. Um, his tier three now gives him 50% all attack for 12 seconds, in addition to all this other stuff. Uh, his leadership is now the debuff, the, the the clan, the regular clans plus all allies getting lightning damage. So now he can be used as a leadership for Thor, but he loses the all resistance on his leadership. The all resistance on his leadership was semi-useful against other elemental damage characters for pvp so he's, he lost that but he gains quite a bit on the offensive side so again i think it's more of a pve shift if anything then his skills look pretty straightforward he has barrier he has shock paralysis bleed fracture silence uh, he has a lot of pve abilities a lot of abx a lot of abl abilities and then of course being able to go to tier four you can have access to the rest of the ones that you're missing he keeps his accumulation on his third skill he gets a 35% uh, damage proc in addition to 100%. He keeps the 100% ignore dodge for 5 seconds. And then he gets a 25% heal with a frenzy buff. He actually has a lot of buffs. If you calculate, like, including the accumulation buffs and the buffs on the other skills, he has a lot of buffs, like, over 150% all attack buffs in total. So, yeah, Odin should hit pretty, pretty damn hard. Enchantress is, on the other hand, a triple support. And this is a crystal uniform. So, for those of you that bought her summer uniform... And we're worried that she would never get another sort of free uniform in terms of crystals. Rejoice. Because, yes, this uniform does cost crystals. It does not cost real money. So, first off, her uniform effect similar to Sif, which is what I was expecting. Uh, but it's only to supervillain allies. So, just to villains, they get 20% attack and 40% increased damage to boss types. That's huge. That's, that's a lot. That's a really big bump. One of the best supports for villains. Then all allies increase their debuff effects by 40%. And then her other passive now gives all allies mind resist and mind damage. That one, I feel like, is the, the weakest and the most, uh, the, the least useful. But I do want to point out for those of you that are, uh, you know, newer to the, like, not super new players, but, but still new to the game. And you're trying to grind through Dispatch. Uh, Enchantress and two villains may be the best team available for Dispatch now. Uh, obviously, buying new uniforms makes it a bit more of an expensive investment, but because her leadership gives all allies increased debuffs effect by 40%, you can put her in the leadership position, and then she's also going to give supervillain allies attack and boss damage, and then you you uh, put her with two villains, and then you're, you're sort of, you're rolling. Um, I would sort of compare the combination of her buffs to something like Black Cat with her seasonal uniform and her artifact. Now, Black Cat gives a few more buffs, and her buffs are a bit larger. Like, she gives 65% attack instead of 20, and she gives Ignore Dodge as well. Um, but they're similar, right? They're, they're actually pretty similar. And uh, so I see Enchantress as kind of, like a, kind of like a discount Black Cat if you're looking for a villain leadership to grind through di Dispatch. And the importance of highlighting debuff effects is because all defense down is very effective in Dispatch. And so uh, Hela could be very, very good for that with a combination of two other villains that have high all defense down. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out there. The rest of her skills look pretty good. She retains her her charm heal, 
which heals her based on how much damage she does uh, when she charms. This doesn't work in all content, but it's cool when it does because it can go up to 20% max HP for 4 seconds. So it's 80% HP if it, if it procs the maximum amount. This also gives her 3 seconds of invisibility, not invincibility. This is the closest we see to a PvP skill in this update, in my opinion. She gets accumulation, she gets a big uh, frenzy buff and immunity, uh, and then she gets a heal with invincibility. So yeah, pretty nice for Enchantress. The support buffs alone make the uniform uh, very interesting, but everything else, you know, with it doesn't doesn't make her a slouch by any means. Malakith here, I was really excited for him to be PvP. Uh, he does have the symbiote ability tag, so you can use him with Agent Venom, which is really cool in my opinion. Um, but I don't see him having too much value for PvP, but we'll talk about it. So he has a, a uniform effect now when he has a 12% chance when he's hit to recover 15% of his HP. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... that's it, it would be good if it had like a 1 second cooldown, but it has a 7 second cooldown. So every 7 seconds he can heal for 15% with a 12% chance when he's hit. Um, yeah, this is just not going to work for PvE. This is, it was like, if it, if it was a, it was like a 90% chance when hit, uh, to recover, you know, 30%, and it was like on a 3 second cooldown, this could work for PvP, but he's just, he's going to take too much damage, right? He just can't, the, the, he, he would have to be taking, like, 3%. For this to work, he would be, have to be taking damage equal to about 3% of his HP for every hit that he takes. Let's say he takes one hit per second. We know it's way more than that, right? But you can sort of just do the math in your head. One hit per second, right? Seven seconds, 3%. He's still taking about 20% of his HP, but he's healing for 15%. He's got some extra recovery rate, you know, whatever. This shit, this shit's just trash, to be honest with you. Uh, his leadership, though, gets a little bit better. He gets 20 seconds of debuff removal on a 35 second cooldown timer. Uh, with increase of energy defense and then he also gets on his passive now 20% HP just flat HP he gets 10% chain hit and then when he's below 30% he pops a 60% heal so pretty nice here like these are very nice abilities these are very nice stats uh, he also keeps his increased damage to heroes and he also gets a 20% basic damage decrease received now I'm trying to see a situation where you could pair him with like Colossus and Agent Venom to really stack a bunch of uh, damage decrease and then you could give him like a mighty or a brilliant authority. Maybe he could be, uh, you know, a threat if he could if he can be tanky enough. That's the that's the big if there. If he can be tanky enough. The interesting thing is that most uh, characters that can counter his typing, i.e., speed types, are heroes like Spider-Man and Gwen. And he has 120% increased damage to heroes. So yeah, it should be pretty interesting. But unfortunately. With no iframe ignore and all that stuff, uh, it's 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 unlikely that he'll be that powerful. Uh, he does have some cool stuff like a 10 hit barrier, super armor, 40%. He has a frenzy buff of 50%. He also has a 30% heal on top of his other two heals, and invincibility and a 50% buff here. And he has accumulation, so he's got a decent number of buffs. But uh, with a 22 second cooldown on Sinful Blade, he may be very difficult to play. I think they kind of screwed up on Malakith a little bit here. I think they need to reduce this to like 18 seconds max. I don't think they should have skills above 18 second cooldown anymore, in my opinion. Um, and then Angela gets a new uniform. She stays at tier. She stays at transcended to like tier three, whatever. Transcended. She only has one ability, Weapon Master. I don't know why they didn't give her the Asgardian tag. I don't know why they couldn't give her um, any other tag. Pretty weird. Um, oh, oh, actually, there is no Asgardian tag. What am I saying? There is no Asgardian tag. But anyways, yeah, only one ability kind of sucks call me ant-man anywho she also becomes a support like enchantress so all superhero allies are going to get their damage dealt to villains going up by 40 percent so angela if nothing else will will be able to buff scarlet witch for abx and abl potentially so that is value right there then her tier 2 passive is going to give her guaranteed dodge crit rate skill damage bonus damage and then she gets just your your standard uh, increase to her stats with frenzy buffs invincibility accumulation and a heal with a 50% damage proc and short cooldowns, with the highest being 17 seconds. So, nothing too crazy for Angela, but I think the uniform effect alone makes her relevant. Uh, unfortunately, as a lot of people have pointed out, it also means that every single female Asgardian, Sif, Hela, Enchantress, Angela, uh, you know, uh, everybody, Jane Foster even, they are all support characters. Kind of weird. Anywho... Uh, Odin's tier 4 looks pretty spicy. It gives him, when triggered, 
four second cleanse, four second immunity to debuffs, 100% all attack for 10 seconds, 10% heal for 10 seconds, which is 100% of his HP over 10 seconds. And then it also does damage. So it's offensive and defensive and it does damage. That's pretty crazy. And it's called Odin's Blessing. So yeah, we get an Odin. We get a real Odin's Blessing, guys. <laughs> uh, and then Enchantress's Tier 3. It looks all right. It's got a bunch of effects. Uh, nothing, you know, Tier 3 skills at this point. You're just checking out the damage on them, if they can be canceled early. But the skill effects don't really have too much impact. Uh, and then Malakith and Ulic are being transcended. Uh, just, again, standard transcendence uh, abilities here. Nothing nothing too crazy uh, to talk about. The, the skill animation itself looks a lot like uh, Colossus and Psylocke's uh, and Mr. Sinister's transcendence ability, where one of them is spinning in a tornado, and the other one is blasting the, the from the air, like blasting a beam of energy. Yeah, I feel like they could have done Malekith a little bit, uh, you know, they could have given him something a, a bit more unique, but uh, hey, it is what it is. It's, it's not bad. Uh, and then you got the new artifacts. Uh, none of the artifacts really scream meta, in my opinion. Odin gets increased damage to villains and decreased damage from villains, which is mostly a PvE thing. Enchantress gets mind damage increase and ignore dodge, which is like whatever. She's a support now. Malakith, I was really hoping he would get an immortality, but he didn't. He gets increased damage dealt to enemies with 50% HP or lower. Yeah, just kind of like a whatever artifact. Uh, and then Ulick gets the same artifact that uh, Juggernaut and uh, Gilgamesh have. So, yeah, kind of pointless for Ulick because he hasn't gotten a rework. New future passes here. New icons are here. Enchantress, Angela, and Odin all make sense. And then, boom! Doctor Strange! So, for those of you who want to talk about the Wand of Watum and, you know, the Eye of Agamotto, for, for those of you that like things weird and wacky and, and magical and mystical, um, be excited because not that long ago, it was found in the game files that the uh, and that the um, the character models, I believe, for Doctor Strange, Nico, Sister Grimm, and Wiccan had all been changed, had all been modified. So something in their, in their files had been modified. So people were speculating that there was going to be a magic update. And I could certainly see them doing like an Asgard versus magic sort of update cycle. And this is the first uh, this is the first official clue or hint that we have. They could definitely be doing even a summer uniform. They could be giving Doctor Strange a summer uniform, and they could be giving Sister Grimm a paywall summer uniform, because we all know how they love to give the females the paywall uniforms. So yeah, that's just my speculation, but just keep that in mind. We have the uniform collection for this update, so no more uniforms. This, this update is, is finito, complete. Um, and then we have some other improvements here, and this is, I think, where a lot of other good stuff is. So they have a sort of filter effect now for leadership support and dealer filters, which shows you how characters kind of interact with one another based on buffs that are available. So you can slot in a leadership or slot in a support and check the box, and then it'll show you who the, that leadership applies to, who that support passive applies to. It sort of helps you construct a team. It's actually a pretty intuitive system from what I've seen. Um, but I'd like to cover it more in game once I get my hands on it because this is especially helpful for players to understand how the game works and this is very good. They've also added the story mode boxes and the rewards for them to the uh, sandwich board, to the, to the content status board. That's really nice. I, I will be using that 100%. I'll be hiding the normal ones, but I'll be, you know, seeing the ultimate ones. Uh, and then they added these huge support benefits for new agents. So if you made your account after tuesday after today's reset okay uh or no after today at, yeah yeah after today's reset yeah, yeah if you make your account after today's reset which i know all of you watching you already have accounts but in case you wanted to open an alt account in case a friend of yours wanted to open an account in case you're you're watching this video and you're thinking about coming back this is pretty big look at this you get all of these buffs here 100 percent boost points every day 100 percent energy daily chest 100% increased character XP and gold X XP uh, free. You can freely unequip ISO, comic cards, and custom gears. Free. Uh, and then you also get a discount to reset today's world boss. All of that for two weeks. And if you want to spend a little bit of money, you can extend that with the new agent support pack. 
so you can extend it even longer than two weeks but the fact that you get all this for free for two weeks is huge so i might make a new account just to check this out and see how good it is but again it should help new players uh ramp up their their you know their growth at the beginning and i especially like the fact that ctp obelisk card costs that you can unequip them all for free uh it's really nice for testing things out um and i think uh it should be you know it should be quite good for for new players so that that's really great um and then they did a bunch of other changes like just kind of minor changes and shit like that over here uh and then they uh changed the other thing that you're going to notice that they changed is the size and location of the tier 4 skill striker hero ui so right now when you pop the tier 4 skill it pops up and it hides basically uh, your character's uh it hides your character's portrait but it also hides uh your icons and it hides the icon in particular for the custom gear activation your, your ctp activation or your obelisk activation uh, so they're changing the size of it they're probably making it smaller but they're also changing the location of it so that it is not uh, in the way of that so let me just show you what i'm talking about when you press the tier 4 skill where it pops up right now it's going to pop up above my head here uh, it blocks okay well that's not that doesn't make any sense that's that's okay this is where it pops <laughs> This is where it pops up in the skill preview. Uh, in, in an actual battle, it pops up much higher, and it basically just blocks all of these icons at the top here. If you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, they're changing that so that it uh, it doesn't interfere with that anymore, and it doesn't block, uh, it doesn't obscure those uh, those effects that, that are activating. Uh, and then there's a bunch of game error fixes. Uh, the, the ones that are important here are uh, the cooldown of specific skills being reset when you change phases in Kang Robust Legend, uh, some patterns of Robust Legend Mephisto with Pierce Effect being displayed in red instead of purple, um, and a couple of other things here. Oh, they also basically buffed by fixing the concentration effect on CTP, on Reforged CTPs. So the bonus effect of concentration ability wasn't being applied when charging the gauge for Reforged CTPs. This is kind of a big deal. It's being kind of swept under the rug, but it's kind of a big deal. I'm not saying concentration is better than Pierce, but it's it's probably pretty like for people who invested in concentration, they're probably pretty pissed off because they had to wait this long. Like this shit is like three years old, so they had to wait this long. The other thing that they added to these patch notes that they don't really mention very much of is that the game mode timeline survival will be changed to an event with a set period. So if you watch the live stream, you know what we're talking about. But essentially, instead of having the timeline survival available all the time, and this is timeline survival, it's only going to be available like sort of seasonally or as an event. So you know how we have event world boss? It, it It's like that. So it'll, it'll come and go, but it won't be there all the time. They're making a bunch of changes to it as well. So they're changing the event progress and rewards. So they're, they're changing like how you play the game mode. They're improving the rewards. They're improving the map, uh, all that stuff. But all of that is going to be announced through a sep separate notice. So it's probably going to happen like after the update is live or while the update's in maintenance. So we don't have any information on that, uh, but it should be very, very good because it basically means that you get more for less, right? Because you, you don't have to play timeline survival all the time now but the rewards are better when you do play it. Also, you don't use energy and boost points anymore for timeline survival, which is like the, the best thing in the world uh, because that shit was absolutely toxic that you had to use boost points and energy. So I think this is a very good move. I think for older game modes, when the game feels bloated, it's a really good idea to basically just, instead of killing the game mode, just transition the game mode into an event where it comes around you know, one, once, a, once a month for a week. That's, that's a much, much, much better idea. And I'm really happy uh, that the devs came up with this because otherwise we know like Danger Room and all these other game modes, they just get killed off, right? So if they did the, if they did this event with a set period for other things like world event uh, and stuff like that, I, I think it could be absolutely, like it could be excellent. So yeah, those are the patch notes. I'm pretty excited for the update myself. I'm really excited for Timeline Survival. I want to check that out and see you know what's cooking there but hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of the patch notes i'll be live again tonight at 3 a.m so don't miss that thank you so much for watching smash the like button it helps with the channel tremendously and i'll see you in the next one take care